Inflation data just came out. It's 7.9%. Wow. In this show, I'm going to talk about how I made $9,000 trading this news yesterday, how you can make money right now, now that inflation is 7.9%. How do you capitalize on that? And huge news that people aren't talking about. Everyone's talking about this inflation number, but there's actually something that's even more important than this that we're gonna talk about in this video. We're also gonna talk about step-by-step -step how to win at this market. Clearly, some people are winning based on this data. Do you wanna be one of them? Welcome to The Kale Show. Let's just get on with it, guys. Things are happening fast, and I'm actually trading this market, so I don't have time to put together a huge thing. Let's just walk through where we are at since yesterday's video. So yesterday's video, I opened up some shorts. As you could see, here's a screenshot here from yesterday's video, and people are texting me. It's insane. So here's a screenshot from yesterday's video, and I told you guys to short. I told, I told you that I was going to short. Why did I do this? Because in my head, there was probably a 0%, maybe a 1% chance that we went to 50K yesterday, and there was a 90% chance that we came back down because of this inflation data. And it was just such an obvious trade. So if you're thinking things through, if you're slowing down, if you stop listening to Bitcoin maximalists, you can still make money in this market. Let me just prove it to you. If you go over to my Twitter, I, I showed you my exact trades. Here we go. I made $4,000 on this one, $1,200 on this one, th uh, $3,800 on this one. So hey, if you're looking at this right now and you're sitting at your computer or your phone or whatever, and you're thinking to yourself, man, that's pretty cool. I wish I could make some money in this market, or I'm not giving up. I'm ready to make some money in this market. Do me one huge favor. Just look me in the eyes and smash the like button on this video. I'm talking to you, seriously. I need every single person that is still participating in this market right now and is still here to win at this market to hit the like button, because there are so many people that are giving up, and I'm here every single day trading this market, even though it's choppy, even though it's hard, and I'm making money doing it. And so I want to help as many people as possible. So if you can smash the like button, that would really, really help me. Thank you so, so, so much. Okay. So I closed out my trades this morning at 39K because I don't want to go into the CPI data. This, the, the CPI data was at 830 Eastern. I don't want to go into that having any open trades. And as you can see, this is why. The bots, you see this crazy candle? The bots always trade these news events and they always do it in just a crazy way. So what happened with the inflation data? It came in at expectations. The expectation was 7.9%, which I warned you guys three days ago, I don't know, five days ago on YouTube and on Twitter and blah, blah, blah. And so the, the data came in at 7.9% perfectly. I literally tweeted it out right at 8.30 a.m., right when it came out. So if you're not following me on Twitter, you're behind. You're literally behind. And there were some people that were doing this who actually caught this trade. They actually longed. I know this seems like a small candle here, but this is a crazy candle. They actually went long right here and then they sold right here and then went short again. And they made like literally so much money in like two minutes. So if you are focused, I didn't do that because that's way too fast for me and I knew I would miss it. But if you're focused in this market, there is so much money to be made. It was just such an obviously volatile event. And if you knew what the expectations were, you knew that if we came in at expectation, we were probably going to pump. And then you realize that that's all bots. That's literally all just bots and it's going to sell off again. So you could have easily just done that. And so guys, I don't know. They're just opportunities. So let me just keep going with, with the events of the day and then we'll get on with it. Okay. So basically I kept, I kept tweeting about all this stuff and how this candle is crazy and yada, yada, yada. But behind the scenes, while all of this stuff is happening, there is some news that is really, really not great for crypto, okay? So this is Lagarde. This is the head of the ECB, which is the European Central Bank, which is basically our Federal Reserve. You guys know Jerome Powell? You guys know Jerome Powell? This money printer video, money printer for 12 hours. I don't have it up, really? Is that real? Okay, I was trying to pull up the money printer video, but I guess it's not there. Jerome Powell is the head of our Federal Reserve, right? He is in charge of our money printer. Well, Lagarde is in charge of their money printer, and she says she is going to do whatever is needed to safeguard prices. Whew. When I read this, guys, and most people aren't talking about this, most people are just gonna talk about this headline number. They're like, oh, 7.9% inflation. Blah, blah, blah. This is why you need to pay attention because if you're a noob to crypto, you're probably like, what does this even mean? They're gonna safeguard prices? I don't even understand. This means that they are not going to let inflation go crazy. And by not letting inflation go crazy, listen to my voice right here, okay? They are going to raise interest rates and slow down the money printer. And if they're doing this in Europe, that means they're going to do it in the United States. And that means that the next few months for Bitcoin, for crypto, for Ethereum is not going to be straight to the moon, moon boys to the moon. I mean, look at this guys, this is still my trade open from yesterday. I, look at these lines that I drew. Doesn't that look exactly like what happened? Look at that. 
Look at that. I mean, all you had to do was watch the YouTube channel. This is it literally, look at this line. Like I'm not trying to brag. I don't call everything right, but like this was so obvious. Look at this line that I drew yesterday and look at how the price action followed it. Okay. So there are some people that are tuned into this market, right? I, I feel like I'm pretty tuned in. I've, I'm, I'm like nine for nine on my last nine trades and it's not a million dollars a day. It's not $4 million a day, but Hey, nine K here, four K here, 10 K here, it starts to add up. And so whether you have $10 or $45 million, if you are focused and a part of a community, let's just, let's just talk about two plus two for 10 seconds and I'll get back to the video. If you're part of a community, I drop all of my trades in this community, right? I'm not dropping little small coins that are pumpy. I'm not doing that. I'm dropping my Bitcoin and Ethereum trades into this every single day. And I'm telling you my logic behind it. I'm like, oh, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. And so you can get ahead of the market if you're just listening to smart people. And I'm not even the smartest person in two plus two. There's this guy named Wayzilla in two plus two who is literally a monster and some people are copying what he's doing and it is absolutely ridiculous. Like there was a guy this morning that traded this data. He literally was like, he literally caught this whole move, this whole Ethereum move from like, yeah, this huge candle. He caught both sides of it with like 50 X leverage. He made more money in like five seconds than most people make in an entire day. Okay. And so if you are interested in that, I would encourage you to click the link below, buy one of our NFTs and jump in our community because we are not giving up on this market. We are not, uh, Bitcoin's not hundred K. I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to go back to my day job. No, we are, we are trying to beat this market no matter what it takes. Okay. And so jump into two plus two. And obviously guys, check out the show sponsor, blockfi.com slash kale. These guys, this is only for non USA clients, non USA earn some interest on your Bitcoin and on your crypto blockfi.com slash kale. They are the only show sponsor. I love BlockFi. They're amazing. Okay. Let's get back to the video. I don't know why I just like went off. I'm just going on a tangent today. I don't really care. If you guys don't like it, go watch some other like channel. At least I'm showing you my live trades. At least I'm telling you what I actually think about this market. And I'm like dialed into this shit. I may not be right all the time, but at least I'm like, not like just sitting at home, like tweeting memes, like, Oh, you know, Bitcoin to the moon. I'm bullish on Bitcoin. Ugh. Like people are so annoying. You know, I was wrong back here in, in November. I was I was very wrong. Like I thought Bitcoin was going to 100K just like everyone else if we go to the daily chart. But ever since December 1st, guys, I've been telling you that these conditions are not good for Bitcoin. Ever since December 1st, I have been yelling from the rooftops. And if you don't believe that, you should go back and watch the videos, okay? Because this price action right here is not is not bullish. And, and, and all these people that you're following on Twitter saying to the moon, to the moon, they're losing you money. Okay. You need to follow people that are actually traders. I would encourage you to follow people like Pentoshi, people like Nebraskan Gooner, people like trader. You see how I have them bookmarked up here. People like trader SZ, this dude, Nebraskan Gooner, uh, this dude, Pentoshi, me, Follow people that are actually uh, thinking about this market from two ways, not just one way. I don't know why I'm just going on a rant here. Okay, let's get back to the video. What was I supposed to talk about? All right, inflation 7.9%, how to make money now. Let's talk about how you can actually make money right now. Okay, so you missed this trade probably. Maybe you didn't, maybe you, made, you, you hit this trade. All right, great. So we're back down to $39,000 Bitcoin and everyone is going to start looking forward to one event. What is that event? The event is FOMC. I've been telling you guys this for literally weeks, FOMC. It, the next one is on March 15th. So what day is that? March 15th. That's next week sometime. So everything is balanced on that. And here's the issue guys. Today we had this, this, it would have been really easy to make a trade today if we would have had a different result on the CPI print. So I just said right here that 7.9% is the worst case scenario from a trade perspective. It really, really is because that, that just means it's exactly what people expected, right? And so now I expect this to be a very choppy market all the way, all the way until that FOMC meeting, honestly. Like it's just gonna be choppy, it's gonna be hard. A lot of you guys, if you're new to crypto, you should probably just join a community and, and start getting used to this, start talking with people and probably don't trade this weekend. Honestly, the way to make money right now is to preserve money. Preserve your money until next week when we have more clarity as to what is going to happen because I honestly think the rest of this weekend, we're probably just gonna do this. We're probably just gonna chop around in this range. There's this solid range between like, I don't know, 40K. There's a ton of different ranges, but like some of the easiest, where's my lines? Some of these, uh, some of the easiest ones to see are like 40K resistance, right? 42K resistance, uh, 37K down here is kind of supporting everything and 39K, 
right? We're, we're gonna we're gonna some we're gonna chop in between these ranges. I would assume we we'll probably won't even break 40k. We'll probably just chop in between these ranges right here, 37 and 30 and 40 all weekend, right? And so that's kind of hard to trade. I really don't think that's gonna be super super simple. One thing I will say though, if you do enter some trades, Ethereum is going to perform way better as far as shorts or longs than Bitcoin because it's actually broken down on this. Um, it's broken down on this wedge, and I, I think that, that Ethereum is actually going to head much lower compared to Bitcoin. As you can see here, there's this very long-term wedge here. This is on the one-hour chart. I need to go to the daily chart. There's this very long-term wedge here that I've been watching, and uh, that now that we've broken down from this, I expect... you Can you see this? I expect Ethereum to... Sorry, it's small, but I, I expect Ethereum to underperform Bitcoin in the future. So if you are shorting or longing, I would, I'm, I'm probably just going to focus on Ethereum or some altcoins because those are going to be more volatile and Bitcoin looks like it's more of a safe haven now than all of these other ones. These other ones are probably going to be more dumpy, particularly if you are shorting. So there's a little hint there, but obviously there's a lot more that I could talk about. I don't want to get into all the nuances of trading. I'll do all of that nuance inside of 2 plus 2 if you want to know more about the specifics of each trade and all that stuff. But overall, guys, what I would be watching if I was you is this meeting on, on this FOMC meeting next week, okay? And so here's what people are going to be thinking. They're going to be thinking, what is priced in? Okay, priced in means the market has already predicted that they're going to do a 25% BPS hike. So if you just search 25 BPS rate hike on Google, okay, and you just it'll show you right here. The Fed's the Fed's pile still says it's appropriate to raise rates by 25 BPS in March. So what this means is they're going to slow down the money printer by this amount in March. Now. If he comes on the stage, I said this in yesterday's video, but if he comes on the stage next week and he says that they're not going to raise rates, Bitcoin is going to go, it's going to go to the moon. But he's probably most likely, I would say 99% chance he comes on the stage and he says we're raising rates by this, okay? Because he's already said that they're going to do that. I think that's what he's going to do. So he's going to raise rates. It's going to be just, it's going to be just like what happened today, right? Seven point, everyone expected 7.9% and when he comes on the stage, everyone expects 25 BPS and he's going to say 25 BPS. Now, you're probably like, oh, how does that help me? Well, here's how it helps you. Because he's going to actually adjust by what was expected, that's not going to affect the price. What is going to affect the price is whatever this guy says. You guys see this guy's face? He's going to have a press conference, okay? And when he's speaking is when you decide how to play the rest of March, okay? So I'm going to listen to the whole speech. I'm going to be live tweeting it. I'm going to be talking about it in the Discord live. Okay, so you should be in the Discord if you want to be in. All you have to do is buy an NFT and join. And we're going to be live talking about, he's going to be doing this. He's going to be talking onto the camera. And the whole world's going to be watching. Everyone who has any money is going to be watching this idiot talk, okay? And if he speaks in a hawkish way, okay, hawkish means that we are slowing down the money printer. He will say things like, we are easing back on asset purchases. We are still raising rates. We are, um, what else will he say? He'll say that we are pulling back on accommodation. We are slowing down QE. Those are all hawkish things. You hear what I'm saying? I know it's like a different language. I know you're like learning Spanish here. But if he says any of those words, and I'll be helping you to decipher it on Twitter and on Discord, okay? So don't worry. Then we are going to have a rough a very rough March because the ECB, like I just showed you, is already saying that they are going to raise rates. Where, where's the tweet? I don't know. It's in here somewhere. The ECB is already saying that they're going to raise rates, which means that if the US follows that, March is going to be rough. I'm just telling you that right now. Okay. Now, on the flip side, if he comes out next week and he's like, he's like, I really don't want to tank these markets. You know, it looks pretty bad out there. Uh, he's, he, and he says things like, you know, we're going to take it very slow and this Russia, Ukraine, we're going to take consideration on uh, maybe some accommodation may be necessary here in order to raise, uh, maybe we could slow down raising rates. Maybe we won't uh, uh, bring, maybe we will bring back some more accommodation into the market, right? Those are words that are dovish. That means that he is going to print more money. And if he says that next week, then we could have a good March, and I still think we're going to have a dumpy April because here's the issue, guys. The gas prices. <laughs> the gas prices Gas prices are horrible, okay? Literally, like, what are they? The worst ever? Record gas price. Guess, record gas prices. They won't be solved, yada, yada, yada. These are not going to show up until the inflation data. Remember, it came out at 7.9% today. 
They're gonna come out next month in April and it's going to be included in there. All of this Russia stuff, all the stuff that Russia caused. So we're probably gonna get like a 10% number in April. That's gonna be horrible for markets. I think that April is going to be atrocious, okay? And so, what are we doing? You guys are like, oh my gosh, Kale, that was a lot of information. Yes, I know. I'm trying not to baby people anymore. I want this channel to be like a more advanced channel, if that's okay with you guys. So, we're in this range. We, we are, we are what? This week is going to be choppy. Be careful this weekend because no one knows anything. Watch the FOMC meeting on Monday and we'll see what happens. If we, or I don't know if it's Monday. It's next week sometime. It's the 15th. If we have dovish language. I, I expect us to play kind of in this four. Let's, let's just mark it out more like, and this is not exact guys. I'm literally doing this on the fly, but I just want to try to help you guys. Okay. Look at this. This is how I try to think of things. I try to think of things more broadly. Okay. What is the, what are the big ranges that like normal people, not traders, normal people think about? Okay. So 50,000, that's a big number. That's a big round number. 40,000. That's a big round number, right? Let's think of the big round numbers that people actually care about. Okay. 50,000, 40,000, and 30,000. There we go. Those three lines determine Bitcoin, in my opinion. Okay, so this is what I think. Let's say that Powell is dovish. That means that he is he is like, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to nuke everything, you know. <laughs> uh, we're gonna keep the money printer on, yada, 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 and he's dovish at the next meeting. Okay, then I would expect Bitcoin to play around in this range between forty thousand and fifty thousand dollars, probably for the rest of March, unless we get more bad news. Unless we get more bad news from Russia or all kinds of places, there could be a lot more bad news from other places, right? So we probably would come up here if we are dove, I'm gonna write dovish. You guys know what dovish means? If you don't know what dovish means by this point, I can't help you, okay? I can't help you. If he is hawkish, if he is hawkish, okay? Next week, hawkish, hawkish. I expect us to play in this range between 30,000 and 40,000 for the rest of March headed into April, okay? Ignore the dates at the bottom, okay? Now, that that's kind of it. That's the very simple play. And so, we're gonna wait. I'm probably not even, I don't know. I might not even take any trades the rest of the weekend. I might just chill and see what happens with the FOMC. So, that, that's my plan. Hey, if you're interested in more up-to-date and more, fa I can only film like one video a day, guys. So, this is like so slow. If you're trying to trade based on these videos, you're so far behind, I can't. I, I feel bad for you, I really do. So for, if you're broke and you can't afford an NFT, go follow me on Twitter, at KaleAbe. And if you, are, if you have some money and you want to actually get the best community in crypto right now, in my opinion, go click the link below, buy a two plus two NFT, and jump into our community. We have insane stuff going on in there. Okay, I love you guys and I'll see you later. Peace, bye.